Hi, I'm John Harris. It's April 25th, 2018, and I'm sitting in a teardrop camper in Chesapeake Lightcraft's classroom, where we're running a class, building these right now. Uh, we're gonna take a tour of the shop today and see what's going on. So they've, uh, they're, they're in the, their second week here building uh, teardrop campers and uh, unbelievably everybody is still standing and even smiling uh, and uh, as you can see uh, we've got teardrop campers almost put together. Looks like today they're putting on doors. Let's go take a look. Good morning. Travis, tell us what's going on here. Uh, it looks like you're putting hinges on. We are putting these together mostly with super glue. Uh, did we use any epoxy? Did any, uh, what do you use some? Um, <coughs> so we've uh, reamed out all of our mortises for our hinges. That was the long part of this job. And now that we've got them in place, uh, I think we're ready to see if this thing will actually open. Well, let's try it. We just super glued them on for now. We'll, of course, do a structural fillet in a little while. Oh, wow. Yep. Wow. Looks like we might actually be able to live with that. Your teardrop hat now has one moving part. One moving part. That's <laughs> and you've got, uh, now. you've got two more moving parts to, uh, to put on there. And uh, how's everybody doing? Has this been, has this been uh, everything you expected it to be? Uh, just nervous laughs. <laughs> yeah, ner nervous, nervous laughter. Yeah, so I've got to put in a plug for Travis. Travis is great. Travis uh, is a terrific instructor. Yeah, Travis Guthrie's been a student. <laughs> yeah. I would and, paid him a little bit for that compliment. So, so Travis has has, has this crew um, uh, been a, a bunch of uh, of scurvy thumb-handed uh, <laughs> hacks, or uh, they they, uh, they they've been a terrific joy to work with. It's uh, we've we've all grown as a team together, and uh, and the campers are turning out beautifully. Uh, I really think the teardrop camper class is a terrific way to spend uh, a couple of weeks. It's tiring for everyone, but uh, but we all have a pretty good time. You guys are having a good time, right? Yeah. 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 A, yeah right. Right. Time. Right. I'll pay you all after we're done with this. <laughs> uh, yeah. We laughed. We cried. It became part of us. So that's uh, the CLC classroom uh, as of April 25th. Uh, next week we're building Annapolis Wherries. Check it back on the shop cam. Uh, here we have the uh, showroom annex. Uh, uh, get your last look at uh, Nanoship. Nanoship is headed out today to a new owner in Texas. So uh, we were just getting her cleaned up and uh, is going on a moving truck today. So uh, uh, stay tuned. Maybe there'll be another one soon enough. No substitutions. Or no, you can't bring it up. Yeah. What's what's going on here? Operations. Uh, <laughs> possible electrical <laughs> installation. We were talking about offering a template for the electrical installation based on all the equipment that we use for our camper. That's sort of a package. You would get the paper template. To yeah, use. yeah. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the tech calls go to Dylan. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to be out of the office for the next two and a half months. <laughs> Here we are in the showroom. We had a viewer request to look at the Chesapeake Lightcraft mill shop, so that's where we're going to go. Uh, so we'll walk through the CNC shop on the way.
Through this unassuming door is uh, uh, one of the coolest mill shops that you'll ever encounter. Uh, we've been making everything in solid timber here for almost 20 years. Alright, I gotta run and get lumber. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the Chesapeake Lightcraft Mill Shop. If it has to do with solid timber, it goes on in, in this room here, um, uh, which has got uh, a variety of pretty common milling equipment and some unusual things that you may not have seen before. Um, one of the things that, that comes out of this shop uh, are Bead & Co. strips uh, by the linear mile. Um, and those are made on this uh, interesting machine here. Um, which we uh, had had built, um, I guess, about 10 years ago, uh, and this makes uh, Bead and Cove strips 10 at a time. Um, it's a really fussy uh, little thing to get set up, but once it's working, um, it uh, performs miracles uh, in terms of of uh, making strips, uh, Bead and Cove strips, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Lots of stuff goes on in here. Hey, Chris. Uh, this is Chris. Uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft does everything. We're very highly automated here. Um, computerized uh, machinery. Um, and uh, we, we've also automated uh, the mill shop with a machine um, we call Chris. <laughs> and uh, he seems to have even acquired uh, sentience uh, oh, yeah. with, with time. Maybe um, personality. Uh, yeah, we're working on that, but he hasn't passed the Turing test yet. We know he's a robot, so anyway, <laughs> Chris, uh, uh, what all goes on in here? Uh, I feel like I heard you say we, we make all the solid wood parts here, mostly rails and rust hooks, little knees and things. Yeah, so intricate little parts like, um, oh, huh. yeah, here's a good topical one. Northeaster dory, lug rig, spacered in whale fit kits. We gotta come up with a with, with an acronym for that somehow. Well, acronym doesn't make a nice word. Oh, no. unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, there's, there's there's not been a lot of nice words about those at all. Um, but of course, uh, you make all of these uh, things like breast hooks out of mahogany. Uh, that uh, or these are quarter knees that have uh, bevels in them. And uh, uh, this is the original napless wary breast hook pattern. Tandem wary looks like yeah. Yeah. Goes and, back a ways. Yeah, yeah. And we have. Patterns are basically just the piece itself. Right. And uh, um, those are pieces getting ready for uh, Jeff's coming in to do a wary class. Yeah, that's an Annapolis wary spacered in whale breast hook, I, I, I would say. So, so, just so, things um, that are a little too complex for the, for the CNC machine, though we do, um, we, we bevel some of the parts that are made by the machine. Right, so it's a two-step process. They're cut on the computer and then brought over here where uh, we, can, we can put bevels on them because the machine can do bevels, but it's slower um, than Chris. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll stick with Chris. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we do a lot of other stuff in here too, right? Um, if, you, uh, if you've gotten uh, a nutshell pram or a shellback dinghy from Wooden Boat Magazine in the last 18 years. It came uh, actually from here. Uh, so these are uh, uh, boats that are built differently. They're built over molds. They're not stitching glue. They have a lot of, of, uh, of quite intricate uh, uh, parts in them. This is a, uh, a stem knee. Um, you can actually see it's laminated um, from Sitka spruce over a mold like this. And they also have frames <clears throat> that look like this. And they drop into a CNC cut mold. Chris has laminated these from Sitka Spruce and then uh, cut the facets for the lap straight planking into it, limber holes, and uh, it's ready to build a nutshell pram. So uh, we do lots of different things here at Chesapeake Lightcraft. Uh, this, is, um, this is a centerboard for a, a large catamaran. Um, 
performance cruising uh, Gemini catamarans. Uh, we've been making replacement boards for them for uh, quite some years now. Uh, we've made scores of them, I yeah, think. Quite a number. I can't. I can't really tell. Um, so this is uh, something that's uh, is an unusual uh, center board. It's a catamaran, of course. So there are two of them. There's a, a port side and a, and a and a starboard side, and they're asymmetrical. Uh, asymmetrical foil shapes. So um, uh, this is a port centerboard, I can tell. Um, it's got a uh, foil shape milled into it by our CNC machine. Then they're finished here in the shop um, uh, with uh, black graphite uh, uh, for a, a rugged finish and uh, shipped out. And uh, you can see all the nice details like the epoxy filled uh, holes for hardware and uh, big old pivot's gonna go right there. Uh, so, uh, this is the kind of millwork that we, we kind of do day in and day out here. So, uh, what else, uh, what other kind of machinery do we have? Uh, uh, this is a, a big old bandsaw. Uh, it looks to me like you're cutting foam with it. Yeah, to ship these, we use the original cutout, the blank they were cut out mm -hmm. of. There's a, a frame piece they basically fit right into, and we are able to put foam in around them, the mini cell foam. Right, and use so a it's lot of other things. possible to ship a big heavy board that way. But I guess, so do you still use these for spars? And, I uh, use them to cut mass blanks. Yeah. Um, if I actually cut facing uh, scarfs in them, I can get the, the top short piece from most of our load rigs. I can get two out of an eight foot section. Oh, right on, so it's, yeah. Um, you know, if I lap those scarf joints over. So that's, that's what, oh, so we have the usual uh, round of machinery. We were we were chuckling this morning that uh, that uh, much of the of the uh, uh, of the fancy uh, carpentry uh, on CLC kits is done on a seventy-five dollar grizzly bandsaw that I bought used um, about fifteen years ago, and uh, so uh, it just goes to show it's the operator, not the machinery. I think keep the blade sharp and. Uh, yeah, I bought that from my, my uh, wonderful late friend, uh, Frank Peterson. Uh, and uh, he built quite a few boats with it, but uh, that's, uh, that one keeps on going. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. it's a good yeah. one. And yeah. the, definitely keeping the blades sharp and the paper new and all that. Yeah, right. We've got all kinds of different also. sanding uh, uh, equipment and profiles here. That's a, the biggest stationary belt sander I've ever seen. Router table and um, uh, oscillating spindle sander here. Uh, this is actually the, the compressed air supply for the laser cutting room, uh, which is through the wall right over there. Um, it's really noisy, so uh, we put the noise in here with Chris <laughs> so that those folks using the, uh, the laser room are not uh, inconvenienced by all of that noise. Um, so That's my new favorite thing in here. Oh yeah, this is, this is how, how you get the dust off yourself in the... Uh. Right? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like can dust off the, the stacks of wood with it out right. the garage door when they get all covered with. So stuff. I see you're wearing you a anymore. you're wearing a respirator. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of dust collection yeah. equipment in here. I, I can see, but uh, uh, the dust is nothing to kid around yeah, with. You definitely need it. And I there was a point at which I did. I I noticed the sort of bravado of having brown boogers every day. Um, and uh, that got tiresome, and I actually had to shave. I'm generally a bearded person, but it uh, interferes with the respirator, so um, definitely that and the ear protection. The bravado of brown boogers. <laughs> that is going to stick with me. Keep that one in. <laughs> that, that's going to stick with me for a while, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And uh, of course, uh, one of the two big table saws here. Um, how anybody uses a table saw without a run, in, run out table like this, yeah, I have no crazy. idea. Uh, I still see people who just have a table saw and no run out table, and uh, I don't even know how to operate such or a even thing. Or just a roller or something. It's, yeah, right, yeah, right. Uh, but um, you generate a lot of scrap uh, here, I suppose. Yep, yep. And uh, this is, uh, these, are, these are basically rejects for one reason or the other. Uh, warped, I suppose, uh, knots. Which is not ideal for what I was cutting out at the time. These ones that I save on the table will generally, I can look through them if I need an extra piece for something else. Um, usually these are the longer pieces, the shorter bits you'll see are up 
to gather yeah. up yeah. the sort of magnetic field around the same. Yeah, right. We do end up with a lot of a lot of scrap here, don't we? Yeah. Um, and so this is uh, solid timber here. This looks like cypress. Yep. Uh, cypress from, I, I suppose, the Panhandle of Florida, I, I believe. Uh, I, I'm not even sure. I think that's where this comes yeah, from. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, Sitka spruce for spars. Um, a beautiful tight grain there. Yeah, we and, uh, get some really tight grain stuff. And this is all mahogany here. Is this Fijian mahogany? Uh, Philippine. This is Philippine Fijian mahogany, source. okay. It's got it dried up for a bit. That's really beautiful figure um, for the year 2018. Um, I, so you, know. you can't see I've noted it. Um, this piece, I cut some rails out of it and did a little bend test on them and uh, they were not happy. So mm, a lot of cross grain, I while, guess. There's yeah. a certain amount. Sometimes it's hard to tell just by looking at it. That's probably the toughest part of this job is looking at a piece of wood and deciding that it's worth spending time on it. Um, and then it's gonna come out into a useful piece. And you know maybe there's four or five percent that eventually you you cut it up some and realize that it's not going to work. Um, but we we try real hard to make waste as little as possible. Um, I know that we do a little more planing than I've been here almost five years now. And before that, I feel like we were getting a lot of pre like surfaced. Um, pieces in here and we started we started bringing it in and doing it in-house because we thought we could be more efficient with it so and that seems to have worked out um, and from this spot you can see our the workflow which is what whenever anyone comes back here I sort of point out the wood comes in it goes on the chop saw it goes through on the, the table, table saw into all the little finishing devices right back. right Works right really well gotcha so, yeah. yeah well that's uh, economy of motion is everything in, uh, in a job like this I'm John Harris. Thanks for joining us on this tour of Chesapeake Lightcraft in April 2018. See you next time.